When you work in the building industry, you have to go into places like attics and crawl spaces sometimes. And if you want to protect yourself for real, and the not real version of this is having gloves, for example, in your pocket. When you have been doing this for a long time, you start to get real cocky and you say, oh, I can go up into the attic and be close to the roof without a hard hat on or without something that's going to protect me from the nails sticking through the roof sheathing. Or I won't breathe any of that nasty dust. I'm just not going to worry about it. I'll hold my breath. Or I'm not going to worry about protecting my eyes. You know, if you've ever had one little piece of fiberglass or cellulose get in your eye while you're in an attic, the whole rest of your morning is kind of a nightmare at that point. Likewise, I breathed in some cellulose in an attic once that made me cough for three months. Uh, so it's really annoying getting bothered by that stuff. And that's why we're gonna talk about masks today. If you're gonna be up in an attic the way that I have been in the past, and you're gonna really protect yourself, you have a mask on. And we're gonna talk about the different kinds of masks in this video, this being one of the cool new kinds. You'll, you're gonna have goggles on to make sure you don't get a splinter or a piece of dust in your eye. You're gonna have a hat on. And that's a lot of equipment to have. Also, if you're wearing one of those disposable masks and you're breathing out, it's gonna fog up your goggles and that gets annoying. So there's all kinds of kind of luggage problems and also use problems that this thing solves. This is called the Air 3 from a company called Microclimate. And I've got over here a guide to air purifying respirators. So we're gonna go through the CDC and NIOSH's kind of breakdown of how these masks work, what they're supposed to do and why they're protecting you the way that they are, and then why you would build one that's like this. But let's go ahead and just unbox this thing for right now. When you open it up, it's sexy. I always appreciate that. This is called a powered air purifying respirator, P-A-P-R. So the way that it works is you get this kind of cowling and I'm gonna go ahead and put this on so that you can see how it works. I'm fitted into a, a headpiece like in a hard hat. So it's, it's got a nice fit and then you tighten the neck. And when you tighten the neck, now the air is not, you know, you're basically blocking most of the pathway. Now, is this gonna be a perfectly airtight seal? No, which is why powered. So at the bottom of this, you press the button, it beeps, and it starts a fan up, which pulls air through these two huge filters here, which are basically HEPA filters, uh, and it positively pressurizes the mask. And I really like that because it's, we're always talking about pressures on this channel. And when you pressurize a room, like you can consider this like a room in a, a hospital, which would be an operating room. Operating rooms, always positive pressure. No air gets into the operating room except through the approved pathway that they have set up. In a room where you've got somebody who's really sick with something that's contagious, you're gonna have that be negative pressure so that air falls into the room, never comes out of that room. So those two different ways of using pressure to induce the effect that you want are ideal. So this thing, just to be clear, is the eye mask. So it's gonna protect your eyes. It's gonna protect my head. It's also gonna make sure that I'm protected from my breathing pathway. So let's talk about the guide to air purifying respirators here. Air purifying respirators work by removing particles, which is what this one does. This is not a vapor, like a chemical vapor mask because it doesn't have the right cartridges for it. But if you're only dealing with particles, which are little droplets of liquid and little blobs of solid stuff floating around in the air, and these can float around. If you didn't get the memo during COVID, they could float around for <clears throat> hours days, weeks, depending on the size of them. So these things filter those and they do not supply oxygen. This is something that's really important to understand about this. So when you're using this, you are not supposed to be going into a, an environment that doesn't have enough oxygen in it. If it's been flooded with carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide and there's just not enough oxygen, this cannot help you. This is poor using the air around you, filtering out certain stuff that you don't want in your breathing uh, tract and then making sure that you can do your job. So the first type that we're talking about here is the disposable kind, filtering face piece respirators. So basically N95, that's what we were all using at the beginning of and throughout COVID. At the beginning, remember they sold out. With or without the little piece that you can see here on the guide, yes, it does restrict your breathing. So that little uh, valve allows you to breathe out really freely and then breathe in through the filter, which is a little bit harder, but then the breathing out is easier. 
Moving on, filtering face piece respirators also need to be tightly sealed to the user's face. This is kind of a big deal for somebody who generally doesn't shave. This is just not gonna work for that very well because it's a little bit of a gap in your, in your mask, which again, with the pressure, can solve that. So all of these have an assigned protection factor, APF, and this is one of the acronyms that they do bring up again and again. The assigned protection factor is 10. That means it's gonna make your exposure one-tenth of what it would be. Okay, so elastomeric half face piece respirators look like this. I have two of these. They are good uh, largely because you can have these vapor canisters attached to them. So if you're going into a house that is uh, infested with mold, that is going to be something that you're going to want because the vapors that come off of mold, uh, the mycotoxins, are things that you're, you can't filter out with part. They're not particles. They're molecules, which are much, much tinier. So those are generally, I find, a giant pain in the butt. I don't like the straps. They seem always like levers and pulleys. It's very strange. Um, also, it says uh, right here, when cleaning and sanitizing a respirator, I've never done that. And I, I, that was the first time I'd ever seen this. I was like, oh, it's a kind of a revelation to me that you would like clean and, you know, all that. And it's totally dusty after having worn it in construction sites. It's nasty. Again, it says annual fit test is required to approve, to, to be OSHA approved. Nobody's going to come out and like, look at me from OSHA. I'm one person. But if you have employees and you need them to be protected because they are in these spaces, crawl spaces, attics, nasty houses, you, you need to have these types of equipment for them and you need to have an annual fit test. I don't really, I mean, I imagine there's a process for calling and getting an annual fit test. I don't know what that is, but um, there's gotta be something that, that costs. Which brings us to this. So the powered air purifying respirator, right? Full mask, you can have a beard. You can have a weird shaped face. It's cool because you're not worrying about the fit test. You're worrying about positively pressurizing the environment that you're in. So it's going to create the positive pressure and it's got a better filtration factor than the disposable filters that we were looking at up top. This one, the Air 3, does have the APF of 25, which is your exposure is 1 25th of what it would be without the mask. You can get them, it says here, up to 1,000. That would be in the construction industry, I should not be exposing myself or my employees to anything that needs me to be down by a thousand. Uh, that would be probably something that I'd send like hazmat people into, which is what this guy looks like he's trying to do here. So this thing, you can actually get a discount. I don't do the commission thing. I don't care if you buy it, I'm happy for you. They are offering a 10% discount to people who have seen this video with code HDTV10. You get 10% off. Uh, it's about $500, $600 for the mask or for the kit. And the kit would come with an you know extra uh, filters, things like that. So do check this out. I think that this is an interesting three-in-one product that does solve problems for people like me. And especially if I had employees, this is kind of a no-brainer. It gets rid of the fit test, gets rid of my concern about the you know whether they have a beard or not on a certain day. And then I just need to make sure that they're charged. So I believe it's got about an eight hour charge on it and it'll warn you when it's getting low before it just cuts out. Because of course, when it cuts out, you don't really have air anymore. So do pay attention to the battery levels when you're using a piece of electronics, especially when it's gonna be protecting your face. Thanks very much for watching. Please do comment below if you have other things to add about units like this. If there are things that I'm not aware of that you think that people should know about, please do say so. Like and subscribe, tune in next time.